So storytelling is something that is talked about by marketeers day in and day out. And there's no doubt there's absolute importance on storytelling and it has a massive impact on the retention of information and also the emotive impact it has on somebody. And brands rightly use it and also media companies rightly use it to elicit responses and rapport with the people they want to engage with. So we're going to be talking about storytelling today and what it really means. And I've got the perfect person with me, Des Jankson, who has seen thousands of scripts over the years and has been in multiple shows and ads on TV. You will probably recognize him when you see him today, for sure. <laughs> Don't worry, Des. <laughs> so let's get on with the chat. Hey, Des, how you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good to see you. It's, been, mean, it's been a while. It's been years. Yeah. Years. <laughs> well, I say it's been a while. We, you know, we used to go to school together yeah. back in the... Um, the early 90s. In the 90s. The yes. 90s was the best time. It was oh, Music, such a good films, decade. All sorts of things. He had everything. He had everything. And um, we kept in touch, you know, yeah. thank God for things like Facebook and stuff and all that. But I also was, saw you regularly because you started popping up on TV. Yeah, I've been um, acting for years yeah. since we left school, in fact. And um, I've been doing, been lucky enough to do things like, you know, TV shows, yeah. ads. Uh, Voice work, been doing voice work, so nice. sort of like audio books and stuff like that as well. Okay. Hear my tones on Audible. Lovely. Um, but yeah, been sort of just knocking around, just seeing how I can get better at being an actor and telling stories and moving through that world, really. So sort of, you know, how do you take an idea that's on a bit of paper and create something from it that people uh, want to engage with, you know, yeah. which I guess is good for, you know, sort of companies. Definitely. I imagine. It's a really important yeah. skill, and that's definitely we'll we'll cover a lot of that I think in uh, uh, today. But what's before we start on that? What's um, so far in what you've done in your career? Mm. What's the thing that stands out? What's the most memorable thing for you? The thing that puts a big smile on your face? <laughs> I'm literally thinking of there are two things. There's yeah. one uh, still open all hours. Yeah. Got to meet David Jason, which was just mental. <sighs> like, Classic. Yeah. You know, Only fools and holes is brilliant. He's so funny. <laughs> And the first day I got there and I was like nervous and you walk in and, ever, and what happens normally is when you come into something where everyone else has been there, they don't necessarily introduce themselves as okay. much as you would like. Mm. So, but you go around and you go, hi, I'm Des, I'm Des, I'm Des. And they're like, yeah, I know. And you're like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> and, um, but I walked in and uh, I said, and they said, oh, Des. And I went, hi, I'm Des. And then he went, hi, I'm David and shook my hand. And I was just like, I oh, know who you are. Brilliant. Like for the first time, I was like, I know who you are. Um, <laughs> That was very cool. And then the other thing, still related to that, but also slightly sidetracked, I am quite a big Star Wars fan. Yeah. And one of the people on the show was friends with some people because they were filming Star Wars, the new Star Wars ones at the same time. Okay, yeah. And he was friends with some of the people who were working in the workshops. We got to go in the workshops and see some of the stuff, like the sort of the stormtroopers and the new sort oh, of like wow. bits and pieces and stuff like that. And you were like, brilliant. Ah. Obviously, you couldn't take any photos, so there's no, like, it's all in my head. But it was, the, yeah, those two things were very cool. Because I was like, wow, this is, that's the actual, and they were like, yeah, this is, you know, for example, Darth Vader's helmet, or this is well, Luke I mean, Skywalker's lightsaber, or... Doesn't get much better than that, really, like, is it? Kylo yeah. Ren's one, stuff like that, wow. depending on how you go. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, those two are very cool. And it's sort of very geeky thing. Um, but I think in a very nice way, I think the first time my wife came to see me do something. Okay. Because like you, she would just be like, oh, you're on telly or you're on this program and just not be part of it. Yeah. But she uh, came to watch me do, film an episode of Still Open All Hours. And, uh, and I was like, don't sit anywhere I can see. And she was like, no, I'm gonna sit right. And they put her right in the middle. And I walked out and I was like, oh. there you are. Hi. <laughs> and then she was like, hi. Right. Sort of, but she had a great time and it was really nice to be able to share it with her. So mm. yeah. There we yeah, are. Lovely. Well, I say every now and then I'm like shouting at the screen. Going, <laughs> Des! Everyone's like, what's going, what's going, what's going on? In fact, there's a few people I've used to work, I've worked with who like popped up on TV nice. and like my, my wife's like, what was, <laughs> what's going on? But, but I think, yeah, I mean, look, it's following what you've done and, mm. you know, every time I see you, I kind of chuck you a WhatsApp and say, you know, nice one, brilliant. We've been meaning to do an episode for a while now and I think, the reason why I just had to, you know, get you here is because I think so you've seen thousands of scripts, you know, of your career and you know, you've ultimately been involved in creating great being part of creating great stories. Mm. 
and being part of great production setups. You know, I think there's a lot that the employer branding world, employer marketing world can learn from it because ultimately we sit on, companies sit on thousands of great stories. Mm. So there's such great potential to just open up those stories and use that to not only make the people who are working for that company feel great about what they do and recognize you know, their mastery over something and their feeling of purpose about what they're doing, but also in people looking in and going, wow. Mm. You know, and at the moment, I'd say it's, it's fair to say that a lot of content out there is, is, is more of the standard question answer videos. No day is the same mm. content and, and that's it, but take a different angle on it and I think you can get so much more. So I think, yeah, that's, it's, that's gonna be the chat for today. For yeah, sure. I mean, I think, you know, if we're gonna dive straight in there. Yeah. Think about lockdown. Think about the stories that people are talking about, let's say on social media. Mm. People got very into normal people or the bodyguard. And you think, oh, yes. yeah, yeah. what's good about those stories? You know, one is two kids falling in love and having their sort of life together in Ireland. And the other one is a bodyguard to a high profile person in London trying to thwart some sort of, you know, nefarious plot, let's mm. use those words. Um, but both of them were talked about by everybody over the course of lockdown. Now, why? What mm. grabbed that out of people? And you think, well, the story's the same, that, you know, we've just summed them up. But the idea, I suppose, is that you can, they gave you a feeling as well, and that yes. will take yeah. a good story to a great story. Mm. A good story is something like, I really like the beginning, middle and end. You know, it's paced well, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe there's a theme or two or something that speaks to me, yeah. the person, the average audience person. But a great story will give you that, but also give you a feeling as well. You know, if you said, um, if I said to you, what was your house like at Christmas? And yeah. you said, full of Christmas stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, fine, I can understand that. But mm -hmm. if I said, what was your house like at Christmas? Mine was, and you said, mine was the house that I wanted to wake up in Christmas, that anyone would want to wake up in on Christmas day. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly I'm thinking, what am I thinking? You know, there's a lovely breakfast smell in the air. There's maybe the sound of Christmas songs going on. There's mm. a happy feeling. Mm. And because of that happy feeling, I'm involved. And then because I'm involved, we have a sort of group dynamic yes. where we're pulling in the same direction. And suddenly it's easy then for us to work from the same page mm. and go right this is what we want and that's the thing I guess that good storytelling to great storytelling does is moves from a nice idea on the page well written to a feeling and to be able to craft that feeling or mold that feeling then allows you to open up a whole world of other bits and pieces that people will love to sort of be involved in mm. you know yeah. and I guess for you with employer marketing as you just said, if a company starts off with, hi, my name is John, I love working here, I do all of the things that I like to do, it seems very dry and very unnatural. Whereas mm. if John says, you know what, I come in and the thing that gets me is that this happens. And whatever that thing is that makes John happy, you can either relate to and go, that's the thing for me. Mm. I like where that, that action's happening. Yeah. I want to go and find out more about it. Or you go, well, maybe not for me, but maybe they have something else that might be for me. And both of those things mean that I'm now engaged and I'm going to go and want to find out more, mm -hmm. you know, which I think is how you do it. Um, you're right. Yeah. yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think it kind of goes to that thing that we talked about, kind of talked about it as part of prepping for this, but it's, um, it's that thing about moving from of informational, transactional questioning yes, to yeah. the more emotive, you know. Mm. You know, story, the re retention of information is so much better when it's wrapped in a story. Yeah. But how can you get it when you're just really asking for the information? Mm. So I think, yeah, that, again, that's, that's why I wanted to get you on because I think, you know, you've seen thousands of scripts that you know if it's, if it's a good story mm. or whether it's a, a great story. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about, we talked about before actually about, um, so if you're, yeah, the kind of the context that you're given mm. when you read a script, 
there's a good script and yeah. there's a great script. And I quite liked the difference between the two that you, you told me about yesterday. Yeah, so a good script will be, John walks into a bar, he sees eight people. He knows that one of them is his target that he's mm. got to meet. John says to the barman, I'll have a scotch. Barman pours him a double. John drinks the scotch and looks around the bar. You know, and it's, it's good, it's interesting. You're wondering what's gonna happen. Mm. Um, and that would be a good script and I would probably read it to find out what happens because I'm curious to know. A great script would probably say, John walks into, no, John opens a door. The light diffuses in front of him as his eyes adjust to a dimly lit interior. He scans yeah. sketchy faces looking back at him, some with disdain, some with murder in their eyes. John closes the door, the darkness falls. He walks up to the bar. The barman, a hulking great giant of a man, looms up from behind the bar and demands, what does John want? Mm. John stands his ground, looks eye to eye and says, scotch, neat, rocks. Don't give me none of that bottom shelf stuff either. Mm. Suddenly you're like, uh, yeah. John's a bad man. <laughs> he knows what time it is, he knows how to yeah. like, handle himself, but you get an idea of what the bar's like. You get an idea of what the people are like. And because of that, you can put yourself in that situation much easier than if you said John walks into a bar. Mm. Now, as a good script or as the script progresses in its journey, all that information, the more information you can put in there about the scenes that you're trying to create will help everyone else move through the journey. So the director will read it and go, I can see exactly where to put the camera and I know exactly how I'm gonna edit this in order to make this interesting visually because that's how a director will work. But the set and the costume and the designers and the makeup will go, I can see now that I'm gonna, I maybe want a couple of dirty looking scars in there or I maybe want okay. a rug or I need to have some really nice like, you know, rock memorabilia on the walls or I need to have like sketchy old posters of like, stuff, you know, mm -hmm. things that create an idea. Is it a dead-end bar in a dead-end part of town? Yeah. Is it a well-traveled, really nice bar? It can't be the really nice bar because the description says that it's dirty and a bit dangerous and a bit like daytime drink disaster mm -hmm. people. So then you're thinking low end. Then the casting are thinking, right, I need to cast some people that don't look model, beautiful type. They need to look a bit dirty and a little bit angry and maybe a little bit rough around the edges. And yeah. I can get someone in there maybe with an eye patch or something that's sort of really interesting. Then, you know, the actor comes in and he's like, wow, this is a guy who stands up to, you know, six foot five giant behind the bar. And he thinks, wow, I might be a five foot seven skinny guy, but I can take him. Why do I have that confidence? Yes. Where can I get that confidence yeah, from? Yeah, and yeah. what gave me that confidence to do that? Mm. So then suddenly all these people are firing off ideas and they're all sort of putting them down on paper. And obviously the director and the producer will narrow those down so that they can go, right, we can film this day in this place. It looks like this. Let's use all of these things. Great idea. Let's use that. Not going to work, but let's keep it on hold. And then before you know it, you've, cra you've crafted something that by the end is now great looking, great feeling, everyone's very excited. And it might be mm. that you came up with 10 ideas and only one was used. Mm. But you don't feel bad that your one idea was used, you feel great that you've been included in the process of making something much better. That's true. Yeah. And that's the thing about a great script, can carry everything along. And everything always starts with a great script. You get everybody involved because they want to know where the story goes ultimately, but it makes their minds start firing with ideas. Mm. And even on the day when you're there in a room and you're doing that scene, you know, the John character might walk in and go, oh, you know what, I'm gonna walk in, I'm gonna trip. What does that say? Yeah. You know, do I trip into a jukebox and then the music stops? Yeah, nice. Yeah. Old timey style. And then everyone looks up that I look an idiot, but then when this guy stands up in front of me and I'm still like, what? Yeah. You know, the, the yeah. confidence is back and you think, yeah, exactly. where is this even, even, even tough people can trip, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you just think, and is that, and then does that go with the character later on in the story or before in the story? Mm. And you can work that way. So there's always openings in great storytelling for you to input, keep inputting. Mm. And obviously, ultimately, with a film or TV program, uh, 
there's a director involved who will then carve it back to the story. Mm. They, they always keep the story forefront. Because I, as an actor, may be like, I'm going to do a thousand things to make me look good, yeah. or 50 things that I think will be fun. Yeah. And the director's like, only 10 of those work. Yeah. But they, you know, they'll put it in there and I'll, be, I'll still be happy because I'll think I've done this or I've discussed it with the director, I'll say, what about this? And they'll say, well, I, I think that's distracting. Mm. Or I like that, that's definitely going to add. And then, oh, it fires something in the director's brain and says, oh, later on I can use that later. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah. Bang. And then they tell everyone else and the information descends and it filters out and it goes on. And what happens is it's just, a, it's not a joyful feeling. Some days of filming or TV make work is very tiring. But what it does is everyone wants to be a part of it. Mm. Everybody wants to be involved. They want to work with that director as an actor because they let you come in with ideas. Mm. They want to work with that stunt team because they come with really exciting stuff. You know, you want to work with those costume designers because they either make things that look brilliant or, you know, in this sort of, if we were doing this, they would make stuff that would be really like, you go, yeah, I yeah. really feel this. And yeah. this really helps my character. And this really helps your character. Mm. And it really speaks to people outside who are going to be watching this production. So that's where great storytelling excels. And if it's dry, if it's something very uninteresting, let's say uh, a police procedural mm. drama, crime, people finding the crime, end. Mm. You wonder how there are so many 10, 15, 20, 30 different versions on TV. Yeah. Absolutely. You think, how? How are there so many? It's all the same thing. But what happens is you, the story creates a feeling. So each, if you watch each episode, there's a different feeling. You know, maybe an old lady is knocked over and she's robbed, but as she's robbed, she goes into hospital, mm. which speaks to you. Suddenly you're watching it and you're thinking, oh, my parents are old. I wonder how they're going to be if they go into hospital. Yeah. Or you think about the time when you were in hospital. Mm. Or you think about the time where maybe you helped someone who had been robbed. You know, so then suddenly you're, you're watching it, but you're in your own... It's relatable, isn't it? Yeah, it's super relatable. That's it. Yeah. The relatability is what makes it great and what makes it long lasting as well. Mm. And in terms of sort of marketing or, you know, um, especially in terms of ads marketing, they're trying to make it aspirational. There was a point where it was like, you want to live this life because you don't have this life. And that's not really yes, yeah, yeah. what you want. Especially, uh, it kind of grew from the 80s when really advertising yeah. really was like, you know, really was one of its heydays, wasn't it? Mm. In terms of all the, yeah. And I suppose yeah. it was in line with the attitude of the 80s as well, of exactly. wanting more, yeah. you know. But then look at something that worked really well was the Oxo family or the Nesca family. Yeah, that's true, very true. Absolutely. Iconic, man. Iconic, Iconic yeah. like you say. And why? Because they had something that was relatable. Yeah, totally. A couple of kids in a family, and maybe you were a kid age, I remember we were kid age mm. at the time in the Oxo family. I remember thinking, because we didn't, my particular family didn't sit down to meals together like that unless it was Christmas mm, or okay. Easter. But they seem to do it every week. So I was like, oh, that'd be really nice if we did that every week. And then I came around to your house and you guys were like, yeah, we sit down to dinner quite a lot. Oh, and yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, it does happen. Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, but it, again, it's something, the feeling was there. And mm. what they had in those ads was just that nice homely feeling, which mm. if you didn't have it, you wanted. And if you did have it, you saw someone else relating to it with you. So then you were like, oh, that works well. And again, you know, it had legs and it lasted for ages because all totally. you had to do was create that feeling. You just had to give people an idea of how nice it is. Mm. That's, yeah, I mean, well, there's so much to unpack there, I think. But, like, you know, I think you're talking about in terms of the team around, you know, mm. that thing about how actually being able to enable, give enough direction for what you want to, mm. on the point of view, the direction of the whole of the whole production, but also having that flexibility for people to then bring their own ideas. Yeah. If you've got that kind of North style, whatever you want to call it, there's a valid reason for going, oh, well, that's not quite right, or mm. maybe we do it this way. 
Um, so everyone's like on, on the same page as you said. I think the thing about, I really like what you say about, about that as well, because if I think about it from a, from a, most of the employer content out there is not going to, you're not really going to have actors. <laughs> I've seen some videos <laughs> where they've got actors and they're terrible. You know, it's like, use your employees as much as you can, if not all, all the time. Yeah. But I think there's still a thing there because you, you don't want your employers to be actors, but you still want them to, to be the main character in their, in their own yeah. story, in their own employee story, of which that story can obviously have its role to play, have its chapter mm. in the organization that they're working for all the time. So, Is it how do you play the main character in your story? Mm. For example, let's, like in our pre-chat, we were talking mm. about the program You on mm. Netflix. Yes. Yeah. And I said, I could play a serial killer. And he went, really? Yeah. And I went, yeah. I said, everyone's got it. Because <clears throat> I said that yeah. every character contains elements of you. And then you said, in the interview that you watched with him, he said, oh, there's elements of this character in me. I just got to amplify them and off we go. Totally, yeah. Going back to your employees speaking for the company and being the main character in their story, they would have to just elevate the things that they do. Now, maybe they mm. are let's say an office manager who looks after the sort of ticking over of the office. Mm. People take them for granted, but when something goes wrong, they're very good in a clutch situation. Yeah. Now, if that person was talking about what they did, they would probably be quite like, yeah, you know, I do this, I move some stuff. I, I, you know, you know, who likes to blow their own trumpet? Whereas if other people were talking about a time where it went wrong and that person helped them out, glowing, mm. glowing, because mm. Why wouldn't it be? You'd totally. be there, you know, saying it was two in the morning. I couldn't get the photocopier to work to send this, it, to print this thing, to scan it, to send it, to make sure that we're in by the deadline. And then suddenly office manager comes in, saves the day. Mm. Of course, they're brilliant. Yeah. You know, next day I maybe bought them a coffee or maybe yeah. I just gave them a, a sort of like a thank you email, yeah. you know, because I was against the wall and I realized that oh, actually I should have done a bit more for them. Mm. Those sort of stories will mean that that person, if you're talking about that one office manager person, suddenly seems like a shining light. Mm. For me, if I was going to apply, or if I saw that on an employer's website, how people can eulogize about someone who works there, I'll probably think, that seems lovely. Yeah. It's really nice that people really understand the worth of someone who they work with. So why don't I find out more about that company? Mm. You know, because I want to go there and become part of that thing you're right you know but the main what i'm saying is the main office manager doesn't make themselves the main character in their story everyone else does around them yeah absolutely yeah because yeah you because yeah. people are natural i think generally people are it's human to be modest about things you yeah know? don't want, actually you don't want to blow your own trumpet that's brits anyway but, yeah. like definitely brits, sort of yeah, certain definitely, other yeah, countries could be true. like Woo! Yeah, it's that's true yeah yeah um, but it's like as, i think when you talk about it, it reminds me of a situation where i was I was talking with a colleague of mine um, to um, nurses, support mm. workers, and a like housekeeper who worked in a hospital, and and we're talking, and someone said about the housekeeper said, "If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be able to run this place." It's like that wow. is what we're going to talk about. Yeah, because instead of just going. So tell us, tell us what you do as a housekeeper. Mm. Yeah, well, I, well, isn't it obvious? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I make sure everything is kept, you know, clean and yeah. all that. But if you have someone, if your starting point, which is someone going, if it wasn't for, mm. for this person, we wouldn't be running. That's totally, yeah. totally different. And I think when it comes to kind of the actors in this case are the employees. Mm. But we want them to be them, be themselves, not acting a different. Not, we don't want them to be another persona. But there is something there about giving them the context. Yeah. A bit like going back to your script, giving them the context to then for them to feel natural mm. to be talking about things, rather than feeling that they are right. I'm going to ask you questions, and yeah. mm, that's it. So, what kind of tips? What, what kind of advice would you? If someone's like in, you know, in the process of, of you know pre-production for a, I don't know, it could be a podcast mm. or it could be a, you know, talking heads in your shoot. How could you give that kind of context to, to employees, do you think, so that they can understand 
you know, what they need to say, or sorry, not what they need to say, yeah. it's what they can draw upon their own experiences to then be the best character in their story. It's I think quite a long question, but... No, it's a good question. Yeah. I think the, the one thing you can be is curious. Yes, 100%, yeah. But how do you focus that curiosity to get the best out of someone? Now, mm. we've known each other for ages. Mm. Your day-to-day, for example, you came in on the train, you bought coffee, there were delays, mm. which you summed up very nicely. Mm. But it's not the whole story. There was probably more. The fact you didn't listen to music, why didn't you listen to music? And what would you have listened to had you have done? Yes, yeah. Now, there's all sorts of bits around my journey in today. Mm. And to be curious about your day, it might start off that I go, what's your journey like? And you'll give me the overview. And then I'll go, no, come on, what was it like? In sort of a weird, like, how therapists, I suppose, sort of talk to you. They'll say, okay, what's your day like? And you'll go, it was like this. And they'll go, no, what's your day really like? And you're going, well, it was like that. They go, okay, tell me what you listened to. I didn't listen to anything. What would you have listened to? Well, and the interesting thing there is that we started the question with what, which demands an answer. Yes, yeah. What would you have listened to? Mm. Well, I would have listened to this. Okay, what would have made you choose that? Well, it makes me sort of happy or I want to be relaxed or, and suddenly you're into making that, per- what makes that person tick, you know? Mm. Um, which gives you the sort of interesting ways into what they're thinking about and how their psyche is working. Mm. And because of the curiosity of you allowing them to talk, about something that interests them, you'll then find out how and why that works in your, for example, office environment. And then you can say, great, mm. I can now use that or help them or understand that more. If I was a company that just gave people, just said, right, sit down and tell me five things that you do in your day, yeah. you're gonna get a very similar, very boring thing because you're not particularly, the way you phrased it, is not curious about the person, Mm. you know? And so you have to take that time to be curious. You have to sit there and listen. There'll be a lot of waffle. Mm. There'll be a lot of, a lot of stuff. And you've got to, in your own head, you've got to sort of edit that down and say, oh, I like that. I like Mm. that. But in the whole time, you have to be actively listening. You've got to be listening to what you're up to. If you mention a band, I might say, yeah, or no, I don't know that band. Or maybe I just don't say anything. And you go on to a story about that band, which leads me to the nugget that I'm looking for. Yeah, very true. But again, it's, yeah. it's the active listening and it's curiosity. You've got to be curious. Mm. So I would say if you're an employer and you wanted your people to talk, what do you want them to talk about? If you want them to talk about the office, bricks, mortar, the building as itself, do you want them to talk about the office environment, which is very different day to day? Or do you want them to talk about a good day in the office, a bad day in the office, someone who helped them in the office, mm. and one day where nothing went right in the office, which is different to a bad day in the office? Yeah, absolutely. Those four things are going to give you so much more. Yeah, totally. And give you so much more interest about the person mm. because. The managing director's good day in an office is very different to the cleaner's good day in the office. Very true. Different to, you know, and you say, what was the office? If you said, what was the office like during COVID? Most people are probably going, well, it's quite quiet or quite this, quite that. If you ask someone, what changed for you during COVID when you were in the office? Mm. Let them have a think. They might say, oh, it seemed really quiet. Or the cleaner kept moving all my desk about, so I had to spend 10 minutes moving that back. Now that is not annoying in itself, but it tells you something about the person. Mm. Did it frustrate you? Well, I knew that they had to do it, but it sort of meant I couldn't just come and sit down, I had to go and do that. But then it also gave them context about where they were and what they were doing. You know, you suddenly realize someone's cleaned my desk because they're worried about health. We're all worried about health. Oh, that makes me think about my family or, you know, blah, mm. blah, And then off you go. And then it's, it's more about the person and you're curious about how they can operate. And okay. that will give you, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. No, that was it. And that will give you the stuff. Well, it goes back to the thing about the difference between the good script and the great script, doesn't mm. it? Because 
straight away if you just if you are asking the question in a certain way yeah. or being curious in a certain way you know straight away if you're doing it the way you're explaining people's brains are just on fire yeah. in terms of those memories that they've got mm. which is so much different to the transactional thing like we're here today to just find out as much about what it's like to work here we might have some you know employee value proposition pillars themes mm. that we talk about well they tend to be very similar across lots of organizations so that, that thing about asking the right questions being curious really finds that differentiation mm. between one employer one organization and another yeah. and one individual in a team and mm. another and one team compared to another or one department compared to another or one location yeah. compared to other so it gives you that nuance that you just don't get if it's just a rat-a-tat often talk about kind of mm. don't just rat-a-tat-tat -tat through the questions and I think that curiosity is so important I think that's why it's really important to kind of have a kind of a journalistic interviewer angle yes. on things because I've done it where I've spoken to spent like uh, three episodes doing podcast mm. and then done some video afterwards and because we've already spent time together I can then go oh you you two have worked together for a long time haven't you yeah seven years mm. so what's it like working with working with each other yeah tell us about her straight away it's different yeah and yeah. it's natural it's not like well of course they're going to say something nice mm. you know so um look we could chat for we I could know. chat for ages on this but um, I mean I've got a great example yeah. just not if we're not finishing off, but we both love football. Let's finish off with this though. Yeah, let's okay. do that. Yeah, go on. Yeah. So we both love football. There was an ad sorry. for Sky Sports for their football. I don't know if you can say their name, sorry. But anyway, yeah. and instead of going, watch football on Sky, what they had was Aguero scoring the goal for City in the last minute See. to win the Goose league. Bumps. Goosebumps, exactly. I'm not even a Man City fan. You've got the commentator going, <laughs> I remember where I was oh, when yeah. Balotelli plays the ball through to Aguero, the whole Amazing. stadium are on their feet, and then it's like, Aguero! And the cheer comes, yeah. and you see him wheel away, and that's it. And they've won, and you're like, and I've got goosebumps now. Yeah. That was the ad. 20 seconds, just that bit from the sort of pitch side camera, the one that they focused on Aguero. So it had the commentary, and it just had him. You didn't even really see the ball go in the goal, but you saw him wheel away. The crowds explode, and it just came in with Sky. And he just went, if you like football, done, buying it. Yeah, yeah. Because it gave you that feeling of thing. Now, maybe someone sat down in the room and said, what do we do our next football ads about? Well, let's have, let's have football players doing football things. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. but only for people who like football. How do we get people, you know, if someone then sat down and said, how do we get people who don't, like football involved. Mm, I don't know, maybe we feature more. No, this is a short ad. How do we get, what do we do to get people involved? Who remembers that goal? <laughs> yes. Do you remember people being excited about it? Yeah. Do you remember people crying about it? Yes. Sunny day. You remember there was a lot of talk about it. Mm. Final day of the season, final game of the season, final minute of the game. You know, it's final, 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 all of those things. And it was in the papers a lot. And a lot of people were aware of it, even if they didn't follow football, they were aware that there was a big thing that yeah. happened. So tap into that. And mm -hmm. it goes back to us talking about the feeling. Yeah. Now, like we've just said, we've both had goosebumps talking about it, thinking about it, even though our team wasn't the one that won, yeah. but we remember what happened. Yeah. Like the people who remember where they were when England won the World Cup or this, that, and the other. Like you remember the feeling. That's the key to unlocking a great story is unlocking that feeling it's moments isn't it that's yeah, the thing it's is moments, those, yeah. moments and i think it's it's you think about when when if we're keeping with a football mm. you know angle is oh you know oh i, I don't watch football someone say oh i don't mm. watch football but when the world cup was on yeah yeah and yeah. england were uh, you know going through the tournament mm. or when the euros are on i was hooked yeah. and that's that's moments i think yeah flip that back to um just capturing moments mm in organizations is such a such an emotive story powerful yeah. you know a vehicle that um i, I think just is it, it's i think it's it's a really exciting phase for the world of employer marketing employer branding mm. when storytelling is applied yeah i think in, in, in the, when in storytelling the is applied properly exactly like exactly this is 
from good to great. Yeah, from good, good to great. Good great script. Good idea. Mm. Could be a bad idea. Mm. It doesn't matter. It just has to excite the feeling. You know, mm. a good actor is someone who can take words and make them their own. Yeah. And a great actor is someone who can take words, make them their own, but incite a feeling in yeah. themselves and you mm. that does it. You know, maybe it's the one tear that you see quite a lot in things and you think, oh yeah, because that speaks to you. Or it's just the feeling of their reaction to something makes you watching it go, oh, that reminds me of that. And then suddenly your brain, like you said, your brain's firing mm. and you're in your own world now. You're mm. still watching it, but you're in your own world, but you're there with them as well. It's sort of a, mm. a duality that you want to get hold of. And yeah, I think it's <sighs> fascinating. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, <laughs> it's too much to talk about, it's, but yet it's, it's so simple yeah, when you think about it. it. Is, you're just like, yeah, just. I think it's, yeah. um, you know, you, this thing about like, Great script writing, great, great directors. You know, it's a, it's about, and I say this, having never been an actor, you know, <laughs> you know, but it's, you see the best, like Stranger Things, mm. Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul. You know, I hear the, hear the actors being interviewed. You know, they are able to draw upon something themselves. Mm. Going back to your thing about you, yeah. <laughs> that there's a bit of you in, in you know, in, in yourself. They were able to draw on something themselves to then be able to give the best performance, the most natural, authentic performance. You know? yeah. But that's down to the script and down to the directing because you give them that, that context yeah. that then draws it out of them. And I think definitely there's a lot can be learned. But I yeah, really appreciate it, Des. Right. So we're going to do some extra bits for the final part of this, this studio session. I mean, time so, has uh, flown by. It has, it has. Yeah. It's good, man. It's good. Right, cheers, mate. Thank you.